Now, we will together explore the topic of remanufacturing in a little bit more depth, and especially what is important to keep in mind when designing for remanufacturing. Let's start first with the drivers for remanufacturing. The main driver for many companies is profitability. As the cost to produce through remanufacturing is lower due to reduced cost for materials, components, energy and labor. I have seen many companies earning two to five times as much from remanufactured products compared to brand new ones. Secondly, many companies experience a high customer demand for sustainability and due to this, remanufacturing can help to increase competitiveness. Legal aspects can be a driver too, and we know that policymakers around the world, not least within the EU, are now looking into the possibilities for new policies to promote circularity. Now, let's look at the barriers for remanufacturing. One barrier for remanufacturing can be the fear that sales of the company's new products will decrease and that the loss of these sales will be bigger than the profit from the selling of remanufactured products. This is known as market cannibalization. On the other hand, we have seen examples where new customer groups are reached by the introduction of remanufactured products, thus leading to an expanded market share. Another barrier for producers might be the difficulty in keeping track of delivered products and getting them back for the remanufacturing process. This can be even more difficult if the products are sold globally and have a long or varying service lifetime. Yet another barrier can be the insecurity about the quality of the products or components that are coming back for remanufacturing. Are they damaged or are they good enough to be used again? Lastly, legal aspects, regulations and standards might not, might not only be a driver, they might also be a barrier if you have problems adjusting your products and offerings to meet the new demands. One example can be that the old product you are taking back contains chemicals which are forbidden today even if they were okay to use at the original time of production. Let's now talk about how to design for remanufacturing. In the documentation for this MOOC, there is a checklist with a lot of detailed advice regarding design for remanufacturing. Here, I will only give a few examples. The most important thing to keep in mind when you are going to design a product is to take a holistic view. You have to keep in mind to optimize not only the remanufacturing, but the whole life cycle from raw material through production use and finally the end of service, when the remanufacturing will take place and create a new life for the product. The choice of material is important. Use quality materials which can be reused for many product lives or loops. And even if a product will be remanufactured, it is also important to use materials which in the very end, after many life cycles, can be effectively recycled. The chemical content of a product is a tricky thing. Chemicals can, for example, improve the service lifespan for plastics. However, they can also become a risk since some chemicals might turn out to be hazardous or even forbidden in the future thus making reuse of those products or components impossible. One way to handle this is to try to choose materials which are less harmful already from the start. Make it easy to disassemble the product with as few and ordinary tools as possible. Make disassembly points accessible, accessible preferably from one side and use fastening devices which can be easily opened and closed multiple times. In this slide you see the difference in geometry of a snap fastener in the bottom of the slide against a regular fastener shown in the top. While the snap fastener is easy to disassemble, the fastener with the right angle will require special tools and will risk breaking if, done, if not done carefully. If you are using screws, 
design the fastening element so that it is easy to open. For example, using few types and sizes of screw. Use screw types which are easy to open by hand, such as Torx or hex socket, making threads short. And include the thread in the body of the product. One opportunity to improve the product for remanufacturing is to divide it into different modules and to put all the parts that need to be exchanged or upgraded into one single module, thus lowering the effort needed to upgrade the product. Avoid cross-dependencies between modules. Otherwise, we might be forced to update a working module simply as a consequence of updating another outdated one. Make it easy to upgrade the product, for example by exchanging whole components or by updating software. Make it easy to clean. Avoid small holes or grooves which collect dirt and are hard to clean properly. Make sure that all parts are able to withstand the same detergents and temperatures and make heavily stained surfaces able to withstand mechanical cleaning. As companies turn towards remanufacturing. Information management is becoming increasingly important. As a product maker, getting information back regarding the quality of your products, the ways in which your customers are using them, and re the reasons why they break or otherwise stop working as intended, can be extremely valuable. To make the best use of this opportunity, Create a system for identification of the individual product or even components within the product. You can use different means such as RFID, barcode or QR code. Create a system to save important data regarding the product. This information will be crucial during the remanufacturing process. Create a system to keep track of your products, to know where they are at the end of the service life. I have now given you some advice regarding how to design for remanufacturing. We have gathered more of these design tips in a checklist, which you can find in the course reader. I wish you the best of luck in your future designing products made for remanufacturing and look forward to seeing your products on the market.